there were days where there are no flights, zero flights. With thousands of planes grounded, aircraft engineers have their job cut out for them. We are just like our soldiers on the ground, guarding our planes. In an exclusive look behind the scenes, Singapore Airlines. We're going to check for microbes in the fuel tank. Philippine Airlines. And these are used to add weight to the aircraft. And Malaysia's Air Asia. We are working day and night. Show you what it takes to protect grounded aircraft. It's overwhelming. It's one of my toughest times in my life. We have our task cut out for us. It's surreal. It's beyond imagination. Everything is grounded. This is what life on the tarmac once looked like. Nearly 100,000 flights taking off and landing every day all around the world. We were doing well. The aviation industry was actually booming. Today, the World Health Organization officially announced that this is a global pandemic. COVID-19 would change all that. We will therefore impose significantly stricter measures. Major airlines will ground flights. The crisis for airlines is deepening as more countries close their borders. The coronavirus pandemic escalated into the worst crisis in aviation history. No matter the airport on the planet, planes started cramming in. Rows upon rows of aircraft, all with nowhere to go. I don't feel good at all. Looking at these scenes, it's not a good view to have. It's make me sad. They are meant for flying, not sitting on the ground doing nothing here. So these are strange times, right? Not the usual buzz of activity. And you can almost just hear the sound of the wind. It's very, it's, uh, I, can't, I can't imagine the words that uh, I need to describe. Most of the airlines across the world were cutting capacities to the tune of 80, 90%. Effectively, you're looking at just a handful of aircraft taking off each day. Commercial passenger flights were all but decimated. Never before have we seen this in modern air travel. April 2020 was the single toughest month for airlines across the world. Plane after plane with wings clipped. Be it Singapore, Manila or Kuala Lumpur. Aircraft engineers would need to protect their grounded planes in ways like never before. So more than ever now, the industry is depending on the aircraft engineer to help the operators get through this tough time. With all the aircrafts parked and stored across the world, it's critical that they need to maintain the aircraft in order to return the aircraft to service properly. The aircraft engineer is behind the scenes doing their job day after day, night after night. You could refer to them as unsung heroes in a lot of ways. Singapore Airlines is my first job. I've been here just uh, slightly over a decade. And I have been working for Philippine Airlines for 10 years now. It has been 13 years with Asia, and this is my first job. The very first daunting task for our unsung heroes, parking the planes. So many planes, so little space. Airports that are designed to keep aircraft in constant motion rather than stationary, these facilities are not designed or optimised to store that much aircraft. So it runs counter to what they were designed for. So much of the aircraft that we find parked at airports now are parked on the taxiways and runways. As Asia is the biggest airlines in Malaysia by fleet size, with around 280 planes, there's a huge challenge for us to find a space for all these big birds. So even we park all our airplanes in KIA2, it's not enough. We have to park in cargo terminal, 
like in Bangkok, they even park in the taxiway, and some of them is sent to Phuket and Pattaya International Airports. All this is a very huge challenge for us. Taxiways, which connect runways to terminals, have been used as parking space in Singapore too. So you can hear one of the planes just landed on the runway behind me, and it's right next to the taxiway where we have actually parked planes, which is not a normal situation because the planes are usually parked at the gates and the remote base. Right behind me, you already see two uh, 777s. We're going to have a third one that we're going to squeeze in right here. In the history of Changi, the only other time we've actually parked planes on the taxiway was during SARS in 2003, but it was uh, only for a short while and only for a few aircraft, unlike 2020, where we actually have more than 90% of our fleet being grounded. Finding space is just one part of the challenge. Precise positioning is another. Parking an aircraft on taxiway, you don't have a clearly demarcated locations where you put aircraft in. And we have to take extra precaution. For example, keeping aircraft 25 meters apart because so that when you turn on an engine, you don't blow dust or exhaust onto the aircraft behind. Okay, so you can see all three aircraft parked nicely. In a bit of a tight squeeze, but the team did a good job. We did it. We pulled the 350 right in front of the 777. Like a jigsaw puzzle, carriers have to make the pieces fit. Nose to nose, wingtip to wingtip. Today in Manila, a tricky parking job in an already packed zone. So, as you can see in the background, you have a bay, a parking bay. There is a space available. It is intended for one aircraft to be parked right on that same spot. I have here my laptop. Actually, this one shows a depiction of the entire facility. You can see how crowded it is. The aircraft will be this spot right here. It's complicated. You see a lot of aircraft and you just don't know how to move them around. Okay, sir, we're moving forward now. Copy. It's a tight, tight squeeze for this 777. Its 65-meter wingspan is nearly the width of a football field. You will have two wing guides, one on each wing. So they are the ones to make sure that the wings doesn't hit anything. Slowly, sir, slowly. Constant communication. Wait, I think we're too close now. As the plane makes a tight turn. Okay, steady. The biggest challenge is to ensure that the aircraft is far from other aircraft so that uh, we can avoid any mishaps like damaging other aircrafts that are being parked or even causing injury to personnel involved in the towing operation. The aircraft finally edges in. Okay, good job, good job, okay. All done. Time for a breather in the command center next door, which is unusually quiet. So right now, what you can see here are terminals. So normally, you would have one person per terminal. But since the COVID hit us, uh, there's just only a few people who are working and they are all on skeletal workforce. This pandemic, it gets you Some, somewhere inside. It gets you. You need to think at the higher purpose why you're here. It's a way for you to be motivated. If you think that on a grander scale, you're able to help out a whole lot of people, a whole country, it just gives you that kind of energy to go on. We always strive to keep the planes uh, well maintained. However, when COVID-19 hit, there were more and more unscheduled maintenance. Unlike pre-COVID days, now we have to be segregated by teams. So it's a little bit more challenging now our responsibility is even higher. It's overwhelming. We have to do a lot of maintenance procedures so that when we want to return the aircraft to service, it's in a safe condition. We are just like our soldiers on the ground. Guarding our planes, rain or shine, we have to work. This is what we do, and yeah. Still ahead, how tiny creatures can cause big problems. 
This is kind of a natural threat that we are facing every day. There had been a recorded crash where there is an insect that was stuck. Regular washing. Rotating tyres. Testing parts of the wings. The to-do maintenance list for grounded aircraft is long. If we print out the manuals, there's a list of do's and don'ts. It will be easily running up to 100 pages over. In the aviation industry, safety is of paramount importance and there's a lot of guidelines that we actually follow. So even if planes are grounded, it's not like the, the guidelines or the restrictions go away. One of the key guidelines, protect the plane against wildlife, no matter how small. This is kind of a natural threat that we are facing every day, apart from bees or birds. Upon sighting, we have to immediately remove them. With airports quieter than ever before, planes have now become the perfect nesting ground for creatures of all shapes and sizes. Here is another nook and crannies for birds. There's a hole here. And a lot for them to make a bird nest. Recently in Bangkok, because of the aircraft are in parking moods, some of our engineers found bird nests under the wings. We have to safely remove the bird nest so that the birds are not harmed in any way. The hunt for wildlife goes beyond the wings. Crawling into the hot and stuffy confines of the landing gear is an integral part of the drill. It's normal for mechanics to be able to perform such inspections in a very unfriendly environment because it's part of the job. There are a lot of openings in this compartment any sort of wildlife might snuck into. Most of the time you may find birds or maybe small rodents crawling in here that may damage all these electronics and the hydraulic lines in the aircraft. Even the tiniest of pests, which might seem harmless to an aircraft, pose serious threats. An oversight can prove catastrophic. The data sensors, they are these equipment that is installed in front of the airplanes. They capture air data, and this air data is then translated and is read in flight by the pilots, so the pilots would know how to maneuver the airplanes when it is up in the air. So we have here the PITO probes, which are responsible for the measurement of the, the air pressure in the, on flight. And we have temperature sensors, and we have the angle of attack sensors, which gives information to the flight crew on the angle of the aircraft in flight. You need the air to go inside to have uh, accurate data for the cockpit. If you don't put in such covers here, you might accumulate some dust or insects uh, may go inside, and therefore it clogs up the PITO system. There had been a uh, recorded crash years back where there is an insect that was stuck in one of the tubes, in the pito tubes. Therefore, the indication that is seen by the pilot in the cockpit, it's not the real condition of the airplane. You have to take care of even the littlest things, such as small sensors. We need to always ensure that these covers are in place and they are intact. They are not just blown away by the winds. We have programs in place to have them inspected on a daily basis. Daily, weekly, or monthly. Maintenance tasks are performed throughout the plane. But one part is particularly important. The engine, which can cost upwards of $25 million each. For an aircraft, the engine is the most expensive part. It's a part of the aircraft. We need those engines to power the whole aircraft for the operations. Do you want to 
Today in Singapore, the engines on this A350 will be powered up. Roger, starting engine one. But the plane is going nowhere. So typically when an aircraft is flying and there are regular flights, the engine is always uh, turned on on a regular basis. However, when the aircraft is on ground for extended period, these engines are not turned on as frequent as we want them to. So depending on the aircraft or the engine type uh, and what parking mode they are in, we can run the engine either every month or every three to six months. The engine runs are really important if you left your car sitting in your garage for a long period of time and didn't start it regularly. Not only would your battery be dead, but your seals and your gaskets and things like that would be dry. The engineers look out for readings in the cockpit, but also pay attention to the sound. If there are any abnormal sound or high-pitched tones, so when the engine is humming, it's stable and there's no high-pitched sound, it signals the engine is good. All the engine parameters are good. Engine ground run is good. No force captured? No force captured. We've run the engines for about 20 minutes now. It's uh, very loud and I have to put on my ear pieces. Normally, we run the engines for about 5 minutes at most at the gate. But in this unprecedented situation where we have aircraft all over, Changi Airport actually allows us to keep the engines running for about 30 minutes. Shutting down, number one. Shutting down, number one. Running of the engine burns away any water content that's in the oil because water can be corrosive and this is what drives the aircraft. So it's very important to protect uh, the engine to make sure it's rust free, it's uh, well oiled to ensure that it is in good condition and safe to fly. Running the engines burns up any moisture. But it will be several weeks or months before the next power up. So in the meantime, aircraft engineers have additional safeguards. In Southeast Asia, one would think that it's a tropical paradise, but instead, the high amount of water in our air, the humidity is a main concern for us. It will cause corrosions of our engine parts, causing problems on our system and the aircraft. So we are putting a silica gel bags inside the engines to prevent moisture and keep the engine safe from rusting. They are the same as those tiny silica gels that we found when we unpack our household electronics packages. So it's the same idea but larger in size. For each engine, we need at least five packs of this. So in total, of one aircraft, we need 15 minimum. We use this humidity indicator. When it changes pink like this, it shows us that we need to change all the bags. So you can imagine how many of this we need. It's not an easy work at all. So many aircraft around the world is grounded. So these silica gel specs are in high demand. Every airline needs this for the corrosion prevention. So it's very hard for us to procure. We are working day and night, try to procure from every supplier that have. Aircraft engineers had to work hard to procure engine covers too. These help fully shield the engine from humidity and other hazards. So these are the engine covers, made of lightweight and uh, more importantly, durable material. They're very important to cover the engines uh, to prevent any wildlife, insects or dust, uh, dirt. It's thick enough that uh, you know, a nail wouldn't uh, pierce through. The engine covers are also waterproof and they are chemical resistant. So in the course of maintenance, if uh, you have oil spluttering or oil spillage, the covers are there to prevent these from entering the engine. While the main engine often grabs the spotlight, there is no forgetting this. This is an aircraft hidden engine. We need to cover it up. This is the engine that we will not normally see. When you're boarding an aircraft, the sound that you hear is not from the main engines. It's come from this. This provides the electrical power for ovens, cabin lightings, and the other aircraft system as well. Basically, in order to protect the hidden engine, we have to cover it up. In between tasks, time for a coffee break and a call home. Hi. Hi, Rachel. Are you? For two months, Yup has stayed away from his family. This, I think, is one of my toughest times in my life. 
I cannot get to see my wife and daughter after a long day of work. I'm staying alone in a rented room. The idea of us staying separately come from me because I need to reduce the possibility of infections to my family members. I have to keep them safe. I keep in contact with many persons during my work. So that's why I put them to stay with my in-law and I'm staying alone. It's really difficult, you know. After a long day at work, I'm totally exhausted. And at the rented room, I cannot see my family members, especially my wife and daughter. And there's only a video call and I need them to keep me going and I really need their support. During the video call, yeah, it's very hard. <coughs> what I can say is that I, lo I love them very much. Still ahead, what it takes to protect the aircraft interiors. The cabin humidity can rise beyond a certain level. This can cause damage to our seats. Planes are designed to withstand thunderstorms, but that's when they are up in the air. On the ground, it's a whole different story. When there is a high wind conditions and aircraft in parking, the aircraft can be moved by the wind itself. It's just like what I saw recently in a YouTube. In that video, both of the aircraft are in parking modes. With the high wind and thunderstorm, the aircraft moved by itself, turning 100 degrees and then they hit the other aircraft. It's very really dangerous, so we have to make sure the aircraft is tied down and secured properly. Here in the Philippines, there is always a typhoon like every month, especially in the rainy season. So when there is a forecast of very strong winds or thunderstorms, what we do is fly the aircraft to other base stations like Cebu and Clark so we can get away from the flight path of the thunderstorms and the strong winds. Now we cannot do that because the situation in the parking is horrific. So here in Philippine Airlines, what we do with the aircraft is we make them heavier so they don't get swept away by the strong winds of the typhoons. So what we do is to load them with aircraft ballast weights. Each of these ballast weights is 5 kilograms. When we are loading the ballast weights, there is a specific calculation where to put it so that we don't mess the center of gravity of the aircraft. Weights aside, tires must be secured. Then, there's the risk of lightning strikes. Planes are built to withstand lightning during flight. On the ground, this cable is literally a lifesaver. These are called grounding points, and this is a ground wire. So the grounding point is basically a connection to the Earth. What it does is to dissipate the energy from the aircraft's body towards the ground. If this is not connected as you can see, then there is a risk for anyone who touches the aircraft that um, they would have an electric shock and it's gonna be uh, dangerous to, to, to any human. An aircraft engineer's job is a constant battle against the forces of nature. If it isn't thunderstorms, it's the inescapable humidity that constantly crops up. Okay, so today is the day we're going to check the fuel tank and uh, our team here today, Fauzi, you got your beaker and Sasa has a test kit. Fuel is the lifeblood of any aircraft. Such tests are imperative to prevent the slightest contamination. Aircraft uses jet fuel. It's a kind of uh, purified kerosene that uh, can also absorb uh, moisture and humidity. So if you don't use your fuel tanks frequently, you might have water in your fuel tank. Okay, so Fauzi is uh, draining and once you're done, we'll check for any uh, water in the fuel. Water in fuel tank is not good because water can breed microbes and these contaminants can cause damage uh, to the fuel tank 
and to your aircraft, which then impacts safety. You might think jet fuel is a hostile substance that actually kills the contaminants like your microbes, uh, but not. That's not the case. Okay, so what's good about this sample is that we don't see any bubbles. And that's a good sign because bubbles mean water. So we can proceed to take a sample for microbes next. Okay, so this is a field test kit. Don't you think it looks pretty much like a medical test kit? And we use a fresh kit every time we test for microbes in the fuel. And after we put a few drops, we'll just wait about 15 minutes to get the results. The fuel tank is one of the biggest things that we have to keep an eye on when we're, we are storing the aircraft for a long period of time. So if they do find the microbials, you would have to drain the fuel tanks and then vent the fuel tanks. It's about a three to four day process so that it's safe for someone to go in there and uh, essentially clean it out with, uh, with rags and mops to get all the microbials out of the tank. Okay, so the results are in and uh, we got a good result today. You can see uh, many lines, so that's a good sign of zero contamination. The endless fight against moisture continues in the cabin as well. Just as the engines are protected with moisture-absorbing bags, so too the inside. With the cabin doors closed, the cabin humidity can actually rise beyond a certain level. Moisture can actually cause uh, mildew to damage our leather on our seats. The carpets, curtains, the galleys. So it's important to keep the aircraft dry uh, and moisture-free. So if you think about your home closet uh, where you put a dehumidifier, this is also what we do to protect our cabin where we put desiccants or dry bag to absorb the moisture because it can build up in this climate. So every month when we check the cabin, we also have to ensure the cabin humidity stays below a certain uh, level. We use a gauge to measure the humidity. Just look at the lower number and we see a reading below 60%, which is uh, acceptable. And that's good, which means the cabin is good. The reading exceeds uh, 60%, we have to replace the desiccants throughout the cabin because then that's a little bit more moisture that we can take. One place where aircraft are safe from moisture, the desert. Nothing this big has ever landed in the Alice. A thrill for local plane spotters when the Singapore Airlines A380s touch down this morning. Carriers like Singapore Airlines are storing some of their biggest aircraft in the Australian desert. You would need an arid environment. One of the key choices within the region would be Alice Springs Airport. It's dry, so it's better for maintaining the equipment. By putting it in a more conducive environment for long-term storage, you're looking at less damage eventually when the aircraft returns to service at a later time. That's the reason why several other carriers have entrusted their aircraft to similar facilities across the world, including this one here in the Arizona desert. We have over 400 aircraft in storage right now. Uh, those came from six continents. We've seen a 600% increase in our business in storage since COVID-19. We estimate we have in excess of $50 billion worth of assets on the ground here that we're protecting for our customers. The aircraft will be put back into service as the pandemic winds down. There is a result of the operator failing or just downsizing. Some of these airlines will decommission aircraft. Less fuel efficient aircraft will then be phased out of service. Since COVID started, we have employed 200 plus technicians to maintain the vast amount of maintenance requirements. To give you an idea, in May, we performed a, about 26,000 man hours worth of activities on aircraft in storage. Back in Asia, our engineers are clocking in the hours too. The simplest of tasks can be laborious and time consuming. Take for instance, seat checks. A jet with 300 seats could take upwards of five hours to complete such an inspection. So every month uh, we check our cabin also from uh, first class, business class and premium economy where I'm seated right now uh, to make sure that the seats are good. For example, the recline. 
leg rests, foot rests, meal tables also are very important to make sure they work well, you know, where they slide, it's all good, sturdy, not loose. Things like our overhead reading light and the personal reading light. So these are really, really small things that might seem insignificant, but they're really, really important because if we find problems early enough, we can actually fix them. And it's important not to let this pile up because eventually you might spend more time to put resources to fix them. Then there are other tasks that might appear mundane. Shutting thousands of window shades on grounded aircraft, for example. So one of the things we do is to close our window shades because these can easily block out the sunlight and the UV rays because they can be damaging to our furnishing. We also want to protect the cockpit from heating up. We apply an aluminum foil on the outside of the cockpit windows because they bounce the light off. We want to reflect uh, the sunlight away from the aircraft. So on most of our Singapore Airlines planes, uh, we have window shades that we can pull down easily to block off the sunlight. On the other hand, our subsidiary airline, Scoot, they actually have dimmable windows. You press the buttons that bring the windows from bright to dark. So this is why on the 787 Dreamliners, uh, we actually apply a black plastic sheet to cover the windows because they don't have the manual window shades that you can easily pull down. This uh, unprecedented situation, we had to be creative and think on our feet to find solutions to these problems. So when I started in this career, uh, I knew the aviation industry was very dynamic. We had experienced 9-11, SARS and the most recent global financial crisis. Each time we, we face a crisis like that, we bounce back. But it was nothing as unprecedented as today's uh, COVID-19. My family also has concerns, you know, if I have uh, any exposure or risk. But I, I constantly assure them, you know, that we take all our measures, uh, wear our masks and keep our distance. So my family is also worried, but this is my job, it's our responsibility. We don't know what the future holds, but we are adapting. The complexity of airplanes is nothing compared to the complex emotions that you need to deal with yourself. During the, uh, the peak of this pandemic situation, my mother-in-law, she was hospitalized. There was a COVID scare because the hospital that we went to, there are also patients there who are positive. It's scary, beyond belief. You're rendering service to, to the Filipino people. You need to be here in the office, but you also need to be at the side of your wife. It's, it's really a struggle. It, it messes with your mind. After a few days, the doctors told us that she is negative. The sigh of relief was un well, incomparable. Coming up, the new normal. Some of our aircraft are pulled out from hibernation. We have our tasks cut out for us. So there's a lot on our plate. Months into the COVID-19 pandemic, a huge proportion of the world's planes remain grounded. But things are slowly changing amid revised travel restrictions. That means the already hectic job of the aircraft engineer is now even more complicated. Now clearance, okay? Some of our aircraft are pulled out from hibernation. In order to put in parking, there's a lot of box and its same goes when we return the aircraft to service. We have to do the inspection, remove the covers, run the engines so that everything is working fine. The reactivation depends on our aircraft storage duration. We need around one to three weeks to get it back to life. Domestic demand has come back in various countries. In a larger country, you have different regions. So this creates a market within the country for people to travel from one region to another. In a country like Singapore, it is doubly tough because Singapore has no domestic network. People don't fly within the country. So for Singapore Airlines, that has meant thinking outside the box. In this case, filling empty seats with full boxes instead. 
In this COVID-19 situation, we've actually transformed some of our passenger planes to carry cargo. Typically, we carry cargo in the cargo hole or the belly hole, but we try to maximize our capacity. So this is a really unique situation that we've uh, never done before. From the airline's perspective, when passenger operations were decimated, it is a good way for them to bring in some revenue and deploy aircraft that's otherwise idle. At the same time, there was an increase in demand for essential medical supplies and perishables that needed a quick turnaround time that was very suited to air freight operations. So, to protect the seats, we put bubble wrap before we apply a plastic covering over them. So just like a passenger also needs to have his seatbelt fastened at all times, we also want the cargo to be fastened at all times. So we use the ropes to strap them on. Okay, I want to show you something very interesting as well. Uh, these are our in-flight entertainment monitor screens, which we also need to protect. And we install pillows with cling wrap so that we don't have any damage uh, incurred during the loading process. So we are adapting. Our engineers are coping with managing the regular flights reactivating some of these parked aircraft and at the same time maintaining the current parked aircraft. So there's a lot to do and oversee. In the Philippines, it's taken Manny's team several days to reactivate this grounded plane. With technical checks now complete, attention turns to the cabin. We use some special solvents and disinfection solution to be able to clean thoroughly all the food tables as well as special inspections on the seat pockets and we thoroughly clean it. The pandemic is already changing air travel as we've known it. A new reality that's not going away anytime soon. We have removed the magazines that you would usually find there in the seat pockets. For the blankets, it will just be made available for those passengers who really need it. For our cabin crew, we require them to wear the mob cap, the face mask, and the gloves, and of course, the PPE suit. We have a modified um, way of serving our passengers including the meals that we serve them. So now, instead of pouring our beverage to a cup, the passengers are served their beverage in a bottle and also we serve to our passengers. Our meals in a bistro box and all are disposable as well. For the airport, they provide foot baths at the entrance and before you enter the aircraft. Each time before a flight, they sanitize the floor also. Passengers are encouraged to come in three or four hours before their flight because we need to, of course, practice physical distancing. Before, the passengers can freely talk to the check-in agent without any barrier. But now, because of this pandemic, the company decided to put up a plastic barrier to ensure that the passengers are protected and at the same time, our personnel are also protected. At Changi Airport, there are newly installed screens at counters too. Check-in kiosks will now have sensors. Just hover your finger over the screen. Also, face and iris recognition have replaced finger swiping at immigration. And on the limited Singapore Airlines flights carrying passengers, travel is contactless as well. Magazines, newspapers and entertainment controls can be managed via an app. There will be no more hot towels. A care kit with a mask, sanitizer, and wipes will be given out instead. So airlines are working hard to restore confidence in air travel. Clearly some of these measures will differ from airline to airline. They do have to balance the cost of running a business and allaying the fears of passengers. Over at Air Asia, similar measures are in place. Checking in using our mobile app is the key here as part of the start of contactless experience. You can actually upload everything into our app and then use your own phone that you trust that has been sanitized by you, that is your trusted aid to be able to travel with us. 
We've been using data, particularly analytics, algorithms, to assess the type of guests that are going to be traveling with us. Which areas are they traveling from? In each city, in each country, there are travel hotspots, areas that are higher infected and lower infected. So we look at whether we should provide them insurances, medical protection, and other really such validations before we allow them to travel. So we're doing a lot of trials in that area, but data is a big part to play in keeping an eye on the COVID impact right now. For us, safety and safety of our guests is the number one priority. Air travel may have changed, but out on the tarmac, the work of the aircraft engineers goes on, all with the goal of reconnecting the world again. Definitely, it's for the people. You're rendering service to them. People need to go meet their family, to be with their family. People need to go elsewhere to continue business. You don't think this is just any ordinary work. As an aircraft engineer, we would like to see our passengers or customers with a peace of mind that can board our planes, fly to their destinations and come back safely. That is my responsibility. We have our tasks cut out for us as we adapt to the new normal. So there's a lot on our plate. What keeps me going, of course, where everybody is working towards the same goal. We want to encourage each other and try to overcome this crisis together. In times like these, nothing like encouragement. Video from uh, my boss. This crisis has pushed our operational capability to the limit. I'm very proud of our people who have stepped up during these trying times. I want to thank all of you for the hard work and sacrifices and to your family for their understanding as we cope with these unprecedented times. Eva, I hope your wife and two kids are still speaking to you. So I just watched a short video from my boss who gave us huge encouragement in the efforts that we've put in day in, day out, in maintaining our planes. It, it got me teary-eyed because the emotions uh, that uh, were evoked uh, was a testament to how things that we do are not seen, but yet seen at the same time. And in Manila, a similar tribute as well. We just sang the song of Philippine Airlines. Uh, we sang it with much pride. Part of the lyrics there says that we are very resilient. We will get through any hardship, any difficulty, especially now during the pandemic. And we couldn't have done it without this special guys here who represents the whole family of maintenance and engineering. And in our very simple way, since we cannot just shake their hands, we decided to sing a song for them. Uh, I'm definitely surprised. It was uh, breathtaking and a heartwarming indeed for us to be surprised like this. It's the cabin crew team who made their way here in spite of the very unforgiving environment. You should be actually resting in your house, but you gave some of your time to surprise us, to uplift our spirits from the deepest and from the bottom of all our hearts. Thank you. Back in KL, a very thankful Yap as well. He's just thrilled to be home. Now I'm happy with my family together after a two-month separation. When this is all over, we are planning for holidays. My wife and me is thinking of a holidays in Australia, Perth especially. We definitely will fly with AirAsia. It's very safe. I personally look after the aircraft. I think all of us uh, want to take a good break and actually get to travel and fly again. I want to take uh, my kids and my wife and you know on a holiday somewhere where we can have fun enjoying ourselves. I think that would be everybody's plan. Everybody wants to go out. It's everybody's goal after all this pandemic. February this year, I got married. Definitely, I would love to have another honeymoon with my wife. Let's fly to the sun 
Vacation time's just begun A dreamer's holiday for me and you Let's celebrate in style On a faraway tropic isle Cocktails on the beach for only two So let's fly to the sun, just us two 